Okay, we've been working on a little session, well, it's a long session actually, on the opponent's perspective. So I'm going to just record a few of these opponent perspective types of trading games. It's going to be a fairly lengthy session. So we're going to play 10 and 0 games, looking at the opponent's perspective within the 1100 area. The super strong Gary. Okay, so we're going to open as we do normally, just uh, attacking through the center. We're going to hit the palm, and I've been trying to work this a little bit differently this opening, but I think. <coughs> ah, excuse me. We'll push through here because the knight isn't out yet, so we'll go here, and I think we have tempo to capture the pawn. Now they've moved the queen, and this seems to be a new thing, I'm not too sure. I keep seeing the queen being moved here for some reason. I suppose it's just attacking this pawn at the back if we do take type thing. So we don't have to do anything. We are plus one, but we don't want to be greedy. But I think what we'll do is take, and if the queen takes, then we'll go for the exchange. Seems to make sense. Pretty simple, straightforward. What's the perspective of the opponent? How are they going to win this game from that position so we take we're assuming they're going to take with the check we're already up a pawn and we bring the queen here does block in the bishop we're assuming the queen's going to take but they don't have to take they've got this knight on the far side maybe they bring this knight to support let's take that chance let's take and bring the queen here it's x raying through to their king and they do simply take okay so we'll take with the bishop all right so we can castle just looking to see what it is that we're going to be doing wrong and what the opponent is going to be doing right looking at it from the opponent's perspective so you'd think they'd want to get the knight out either here or here if they're going to castle and uh, they've not done that yet so why have they just done this stopping something maybe the bishop coming here i suppose does it give us chance to move our bishop out or do we get chance to bring the rook here looking for a check on the king are we not focused on stopping this knight from jumping here does slow our development down though but it is annoying if the knight does get here so I'm going to bring the pawn here just to stop the knight from jumping to here and here. We do have the bishop protecting the knight. So we, look, we can look to develop our bishop. Do we want to bring it here? We're not going to attack there. So I think just bringing it here for now. So they've castled on the queen side. So we could bring our knight here looking to attack the bishop. And giving space for the rooks as well so i think we'll do that at this moment it doesn't look like we're doing anything majorly wrong at the moment but we want to see how these um, super strong players gain advantages in our in their games so i'm going to bring the knight through attacking the bishop like we said they don't have to they can just move the bishop anywhere looking for space for the rook to come here simple potatoes and they have moved, so we're looking to just go simple, really, just attacking the rook. What is wrong with that move? I can't see anything wrong with it. But these opponents seem to find magical situations. So we'll attack the rook. What is their plan? What is their objective? So we can take... We are really trying to simplify but maybe that's where we're going wrong let's attack because we've got the bishop supporting and we've tra traversed into this end game pretty smoothly but how do we develop from this point on this is where they do like the long pauses and things and find these appropriate moves and you just can't find a way out so i'm going to hit the bishop with the smaller piece is there anything better that was my initial thing just hitting the bishop see what it wants to do is it going to take or not does it improve its position somehow 
comes and attacks the knight or something. Um, could come here, but the knight is defending. Could come here, x ray through, but obviously the knight's going to take. Knight takes. Maybe the bishop takes, then the knight takes. Their knight is sitting comfy here, though, isn't it? What's it? What trouble is it causing? I don't think it'll pan out like that. We attack the knight. Knight doesn't do anything. Maybe it takes. No, I don't think that's the way to go, is it? Bishop. Do we want to keep the bishop? I quite like this bishop. It doesn't look like it's going to cause any trouble. I don't think doing the knight move is going to work because if they take the knight, then this bishop's not supported. I'm going to go with the pawn push hitting the bishop. They've got many options with their pieces. I'm not sure. Okay, they've moved back. So we can chase the bishop away. It looks like it's coming into this little cubby hole here. And maybe, then maybe the bishop attacks. Maybe the knight jumps here. Delicate little operation. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hit the bishop again. And are we now? We don't have to do that. We can actually attack now the knight. He doesn't have to take or anything. He can do whatever he wants to do, move the knight. So if they do take, then we do have this position here, x ray through to the rook, but the bishop is defending. Our bishop's not got any protection on, so the rook could come across. Right, am I overthinking this? The knight could come here attacking their bishop, attacking the pawn. Is it actually this knight? Knight takes again, don't have to take with the knight. We take the bishop, we double in the pawns. It's a mini threat. He can bring his bishop here, attacking our rook. Rook can come up. So I think we'll try and go for that, attacking the time is running out. It's not a long play game, it's a rapid game. So we've only got four minutes, but I think if we can get the basics down pat then we can see how they're going to gain advantages in the game it usually occurs later on in the game when the time's running out and then suddenly bang these fantastic positions and you just can't do anything it's surreal We're trying to look at the opponent's perspective, what it is that they're wanting to do. Are they still going to keep challenging down here? Does this pawn's weak? Are they not bothered about doubling the pawns? Do they take? Then we take. We're still attacking the bishop and the pawn. Like we said, he could win some tempo, but really this pawn's still going to feel pressure. So he could come here to win a bit of tempo. The rook comes here. Then he'll have to come back to protect the pawn if he's interested in protecting the pawn. Let's double the pawns. A tiny bit of weakness, that's all we're searching for. But as we mentioned, just bringing this here, but the rook is obviously going to come and maybe come here because this bishop doesn't have any protection. It's not gone there, he's defending the knight. So the white square bishop can attack this pawn that doesn't have any protection on. So overworking the rook, maybe. Not that we're taking the knight anyway. So we could bring our rook here and attack their bishop. Try not to get carried away with anything. We're trying to look at what the opponent is attempting to do. Alright, so if we take, then they take. So it's kind of, is it improving their position with their knight? Knight's coming here. This is the moment of truth, isn't it? We take, they take. We could bring the bishop back with a check on the king. That might work, might it? So we take. And then we put the check on the king. Tuck in the pawn. 
that opens this up rook can come here bishop's got the dark square that's where they're going to put their attack so if we can get this here i don't think we're going to be fast enough though are we this bishop's going to beat us let's do that bishop's going to beat us if it doesn't we can squeeze here so that's the pattern that they're looking for this is how they do it these are the, the dying seconds and time's coming out now the long pause that's the pattern of them gaining some type of advantage you know winning a bit of tempo Oh, exact move. What were we just saying? Yeah, so the rook is going to be going here. But if the rook goes there, we can go here. But they're going to still be fast enough to actually get the rook down. Or maybe the bishop putting a check on. We can move across. I don't think it's too major because the bishop's blocking there at the minute. So the next move is going to be a knight move. Just to get it out of the way. So it's going to be probably coming here. So then they can do the rook thing. Well, maybe not there because the bishop will take. So where, where is it going to go? Not got many. Oh, here. Yeah. So it'll go here because it's safe. Time is running out. So we need to speed up now. Let's see if we can do this. We take the knight. Rook's there. It disturbs them. Move the king in readiness. Two minutes. We're in blitzy mode now that's their plan knight needs to move rook comes across where's the knight going then it's got safe haven here oh pressure and the king can't move i can see the picture happening already i can see the pattern can we stop it and then when I'm playing these games, it's like I can't stop it because we're oh, he's blocked the thing. I'm I'm glad for that. Right, so what do we want to do then? We need to get action stations and look a bit positive. It's attacking the bishop. Did I miss a trick then? Okay, let's hit the rook and the knight. I'm assuming the rook comes down to attack the bishop or maybe comes this way. Or maybe he says the knight's better off. Let's take because he's getting a piece back anyway, but we're getting the knight as well. Or has he got some sort of magical fork? The pawn is doing a fantastic job. Okay, the knight is doing a fantastic job. He's put the check on, coming for the rook. King's on a white square. Oh, and they resigned. So we're going to push through the center like we do. We're going to capture. It's looking at really what it is that we're doing to give them these advantages and if we can block them off if possible. We're going to attack the queen. So we'll get through this mire of attacks and um, then have a look at the position. Yeah, we can't do that because nothing's supporting there. And they're hunting a, pot, um, a fork. And it's straight in already. Look at this attack. What can we do? Bishop can come here. We end up doubling our pawns. Knight could attack their bishop and support the pawn. But the knight's not going to stay there for too long, is it? Yep, because the pawn's just going to drop down onto it. We can take the bishop, he takes, but we're not saving this pawn, so we're going to end up having to bring the bishop here anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Well, we'll go with that, because it's activity, which... Oh! 
Yeah, it's got no, it's not. Oh, I thought I'd missed something else then. So it's remembering the move order. Sadly, we're going to have to double the pawns here. So just from that small maneuver there, of it's giving us the bishop for free. Well, it's not really for free, is it? Because it did that on purpose, so that we did come out, and then we didn't have that tempo of bringing the bishop here and attacking the um, knight. So it's going to be a piece for a piece situation, isn't it? Bring the king here. Right, and then just push this pawn. Are they going to give us time to get the knight? Yeah, that's that's like miraculous. 1100s, if I'm playing an 1100 over the board. This is why I like doing this, these opponent or perspective things. If I'm playing like an opponent over the board who's 1100. They do not play those types of moves at all. In any way, shape. And if they do... The position is shot. It's not a good position for them in any way, shape. So we'll take... He's rushing it now. Rushing it now. So we need to be moving. Because look how activated they're getting. Looking to put pressure on the knight here or here or something. Probably there. But we could push the pawn to stop that. Or do we just move the king out of the way of the rook? It will push the pawn first. So they'll be doubling. Because this pawn's got no... It's only got the king protecting. Maybe not on the white square. Because ooh, maybe that's a tempo loss. I don't know. Move the king. Move the king, see if we get the bishop here, see if we get the rook here. So this is a good example of what I'm talking about with the super strength of these 1100s. It's really quite surreal seeing it. You feel like you're playing um, a grandmaster. Let's have a look, see what they... It probably won't show the true grades. Actually, it's not much to show up on there, does it? So they keep pushing the pawn down. It's almost like lazy man's chest, but do I need to ignore it or can I push here? I think I need to be bringing my bishop out. It, could it sit here? No, because it's relying on the king then. I'm going to bring the bishop out, like we said, and follow our plan. Yeah, it's going for it. So we can hit, but the pawn can just drop. So I don't think we'll bother with that. But they are going for the double. Is there anything else? I mean, if we move the knights, his knight's there. And he's got the bishop with the two-on-one as well. If we bring the bishop here, we could hit the bishop. We have time to bring the rook here. So I'm going to bring the bishop here. And when the rook comes flying across, bring this rook here. Got two pieces protecting at the minute. Is there some convoluted attack now that's going to happen? Knights, knights, something. Where we lose that all important tempo and position. And the knight's going to the other side of the board. Probably looking to attack this pawn here. I don't see 1100s playing like this over the board. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah, so this knight's jumping in here. If we push this, he takes, takes and then... He'll get in there, so if we pushed on to the knight, he can still just jump here, or he can do on pass on, and same situation. What do we have? Let's hit the bishop like we planned.
Yep, yeah, thought it was going to do that. I was thinking, no, they're not going to go back there. They'll be attacking the knight because if we take, then these two rooks are hitting, but the knight is defending as well as the king. Would move the knight out of the way. Looking for a nice little fork. Well, it's not a fork, but like a better position. It's not really doing much there, is it? So we could do this. Anything else? Hit the bishop. He's going to take. I don't think I want to wear them apples, really. Mind you, it could just. Even if we did that, it could just bring the bishop here. Thinking he's being arty. We take. The rook takes. Knight takes. Yeah, okay. We'll move the knight. See if we can get it there. But it can simply drop. Oh, he's coming for our pawn, so we can hit the knight, but are we sending it somewhere? Maybe he's coming here, maybe he's coming here because the king can't take it, so that's a bit of an annoying position because we can't do anything about it. We can take with the bishop, but then his rook can take. Yeah, so I think maybe we continue with attacking the rook. Rook just comes down one. Still keeping that line, but if he comes down one, we can do this. So maybe they come off the line, so it might be a good move after all. So we will attack the rook. Maybe it comes deeper in. Might come deeper in actually. Yeah, about here. Okay, so we get one of the rooks off the board, maybe, but if they've got some sort of convoluted thing, like we said. So we come in here and they don't care and the knight does something. It's not got a check on our king. There could be some funky business. Let's go with this anyway. Do they take? No, I don't think they will take, but stranger things have happened. So looking deep into the objective for the, the opponent, what is their perspective of the game? And we're seeing, you know, oh, well, and he's attacked anyway. So I'm going to take this off the board. Okay, so we could get a pawn maybe, but the bishop is defending at the minute. We could get the bishop off the board. Could we? So attacking two pieces. Does he have a check on our king? He does. So we can take. And again, I think we're just simply taking, not really playing. The rook's in the centre of the board. In our mantra, it doesn't really have a place being in the centre of the board. We do have two bishops against his knight. We could attack the knight and get a pawn. Or we could attack the rook and just shift it away a bit. Only problem I've got with that is, because if you have a look at the position, if we move that pawn, the knight's got a fork, hasn't it, on three pieces so i think we're going to attack the knight and attack the pawn yeah could also just attack their rook with the bishop and leave the pawn there attack the rook with the bishop where is it going uh, we don't really want to be sending it all over the place. I suppose if we, even if we attack the rook here, knight here, we could bring his rook and defend the knight. He's got nothing defending the knight, so the bishop could come and attack. Sorry, nothing to, uh, defending the rook. So we could come here. Only... Mind you, if we did go and attack, he could also do that, couldn't he? He can go here. We can take the rook pawn. What is he doing there? I think the simplest thing for me, I think, is just going for the rook knight. I feel like that's been too... Oh my gosh, him! <laughs> I didn't even see that. So the next thing for us is this bishop wants to be taking this and attacking this pawn, but because the rook is there... We can't do that at the minute. So if we bring the bishop here, or take, we could take this pawn. 
and then come back and attack the rook. But he's going to hit our bishop with the pawn. So I'm going to hit the rook. Yeah, he's going to hit the bishop with the pawn. I'm going to hit the rook. He'll go back because he's still looking for this sly business here. Yeah. So we could move the king out of the way at this point. Is it better here or is it safer just waiting for everybody to get on with the fight? Problem is now we've just allowed them to protect that. Anyway, let's just bring move the king here. Time is running out now. We're in blitzy blitz mode. So we've got a pawn that we can capture here and then come back and put a check on the king. And he's looked like he's doubling up on everything now. So let's take this pawn. And let's attack the knight. Take the knight. Oh, what have we done? What have we done? Let's take here. He's going to take the poor bishop, sorry. Oh, I've taken it with the rook. Uh, well, that's a bit of a tall order, isn't it? And a white square as well. Oh, my giddy amp. So maybe we'll just defend the pawn. He's going to put a check on our king. Oh, how has this happened? The miracles, like I said, in the perspective of the opponent. Wow. Didn't see that at all. Right, so he's attacking pawn, so he's going to put a check on the king. Maybe the king can just hide away up in this corner. Hmm. Take. Hmm. Can't really move because I have to protect this pawn. Oh, what am I doing? Hey, hey, hey. Nothing worse than babysitting a pawn over here. And we're down on time. Mm-hmm. What's this rook got? We take with the king or the pawn. A shame that wasn't on a dark square. Can't move there, can't move. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose on time. After all this beautiful work, I'm going to lose on time. Why am I bringing the rook up there? Not going to help anything. I'm thinking that this does this, but then the bishop just gets taken. Anyway, let's carry on. Oh, 40 seconds. Let's go. Now he's blocking the pawn from pushing up. Gonna move his rook. Too clever for me.
not going to take. Nope, I thought it wasn't taking. What shall we do? Save the pawn. Let the bishop go. Seven seconds. Okay, well, we gained advantage in the game. So we saw it in the eyes of the opponent, but we've got no time left now. Even if we get promotion, but it's not going to be fast enough. Oh, what's that about? Ah, ah. <laughs> not fast enough. <laughs> But yeah, okay, that was a good example, again, of um, the strength of these 1100s. Um, we just weren't moving fast enough, a little bit too long in the evaluation. But that's the type of thing I need to do against this type of um, playing strength. It really is over and above what an 1100 type player does it's over and above what a 1200 type player does etc 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 so as the higher you keep going up the the levels of play are way above the levels that you would expect to see in an over the board real life tournament or real life league game or real life casual game so take it with a pinch of salt and really understand that the levels you're playing against are not the levels you're playing against.